Welcome to the Big Fat Mixed Media Tribe and in today's episode we will be creating these entomology inspired uh, little albums. I must apologize because I didn't notice that one of my filming lights was not on so you will see quite a lot of shadows for the first part of the video. Oh, of course I didn't even notice that. Okay, but I will be using these Tamperia stamps from their Amazonia series. Love them. Had to get them. And for this particular little book I will be using the stamp I hadn't used before, which is this little... Oh, how do you call them in English? Ah oh, yes, grasshopper. I'm using um, waterproof ink just to make my life easier so I know that later I don't need to worry about the lines smudging. And I'm stamping the image on a quite thick paper because later I want to cut it out. I do have one set where stamps come together with cutting dies. That would have made the life much easier. But they, they are quite black and white and there is not much room for coloring and I wanted to color my images. So I am using colored pencils to color my grasshopper but I'm speeding this part of the video up because I am by no means a colorist and I'm not um, qualified to give you advice on how to color. <laughs> so. But I like using colored pencils and these are Amazon's brand, Amazon's own brand and they are really good quality pencils especially for the price. I was not able to get them in Europe, I ordered them from American Amazon and they are absolutely worth it. I'm trying to use uh, grasshoppery colors like yellows but I'm adding some contrasting colors, teal for example and dark browns just to give it a little bit more dimension. And now the difficult task of cutting it out. I am not being very precise, especially where there are very thin details. Because later I will go around my cut out image with a black marker and it will hide all the sins. And here in the middle where the leg crosses the body I should have to cut the hole but to make life easier I just cut the leg <laughs> off and it will not be seen later anyway. Nobody could, will notice that later. So yes, here I am uh, coloring around the image, drawing around the image and that will hide the white edge of the cutout and where I have some white parts left on the skinny black details I'm just coloring those in. And now my favorite method for applying embossing powders on large surfaces I'm using glycerin and I am applying it on my grasshopper in a very very thin layer. I will be using this uh, Distress Embossing Glaze by Ranger. Uh, the color is called Weathered Wood but it is transparent so the color itself will not be visible we will just have a shiny and maybe little bit greenishly tinted grasshopper and the magic of heat gun always joy to watch See, the embossing powder didn't cover the colors at all, it just gave a shine to our grasshopper. I like coloring, but it is not necessary, of course. For example, here I printed out from the Free Images website, Pixabay, some bugs, and aren't they gorgeous? You can just cut them out and use them. Especially, look at this fly! Love it! I will certainly use it for one of my future projects. But this is an easy way to get beautiful results too for your album. And so, now let's work on the album itself. I started simply by cutting in half the craft cardstock sheet. And now I need to decide how to fold it because I want one third for the back of my album, one third for the front, and the front will be double because I need to glue the transparency. So I need three equal parts, but I also need this raise so that I have room to accommodate my bug. 
So I'm taking just one centimeter, around one centimeter for the height, measuring it from my width of the paper and the rest I divide by three and this way I know that everything will work fine when I try to fold it. So I'm measuring one third from right side, one third from the left and one third again from the left and that leaves me this one centimeter rise between the front part and the back part and I'm folding I'm scoring the lines where I will be folding the album just to make my life easier. So one third, second third, a little gap for the rise. And using a silicone folder I'm folding the paper. And this way, without excessive measuring, we have the base for album ready. So now it's time to start cutting the windows. I chose this uh, square die, rectangle die, but I like the rounded corner, so that's why I chose it. And I will be cutting it out using my die cutting machine. And now, of course, I need the same hole for the other layer of the front cover and to know where to cut it I'm putting the cut piece back in the hole lifting the cover and then putting the die back on the cut piece and you will feel the die falling in place I'm closing it to check that it is in a good position and now I know where I need to cut my second window because my, this die would, would not cut two layers of the cardstock at the same time. And uh, before proceeding, and if I do not remember to mention this later, in the video all the cardstock details will get the edge browned. I am rounding the corners because I like the rounded corner look. It did take some effort to cut the double layer of the cardstock but my little cutting device managed it so happy yes it worked albums usually take some thinking in advance and before gluing the cover together I need to remember that I need to insert the magnet for the flap that's why I'm taking a very ordinary stationary glue and putting a little layer of glue and one part of my round magnet and that holds magnet in place enough for me to glue the two parts of the cover together I'm applying a thin layer of paint and I'm smudging it with a finger to make sure that when I add a layer of transparency the glue will not smudge and flow everywhere so a little piece of transparency to make our screen and now we are ready to glue the two sides of the cover together and that will encase both the transparency and the magnet. I'm using art glitter glue by the way, you know that this is my preferred glue, it is easy to work with and it's very reliable. And again I'm taking off the excess of the glue to make sure that it doesn't slide across the transparency and my silicone folder again to help the glue to stick especially here around the magnet and see the glue did slide out a little bit but this glue is wonderful you just rub it with a finger and it disappears and it doesn't stick to the fingers it's a joy to work with so now it's time to make the raised part on the back side of my album and for that I'm using two layers of, uh, again, ordinary uh, school grade foam sheets. I could use the foam tape, but I rarely use it now. I prefer the sheets because the result is much neater. 
as you saw in my previous albums, I was cutting this uh, window for the bug vertically, but for this uh, grasshopper, I decided to cut it horizontally, just because of the size of her grasshopper. And I cut one more little square, the same size as the back cover from the craft cardstock, and I cut first window in it, and now I need to decide where the window goes in the foam, so I'm using the same method. I'm putting the cutout part back and then placing the die on top of it until I feel the die falling in place. Then through the cutting machine and I have the same window in the second layer and I will repeat the same procedure for the second layer of foam. I'm simply using two layers of foam because this foam is very thin and I want a significant raise. So now that all the holes are done, I can start decorating. I'm using a vintage book page and I will be simply gluing a piece of page to the back cover. Or should I say the base of the back cover. To make it more interesting, I'm using whatever brown ink is left on my brush to slightly brown the paper and then using black archival ink and this splatter background I'm adding some dots and splatters to the back of the cover and now I need to glue all the layers together I'm starting with both foam layers and this is the beauty of using liquid glue. It does allow the layers to slide a little bit and I can make sure that both layers fit each other very well. And see, there was an, a slight error. I'm just cutting the excess foam off and continuing to work. Pharmacy-like precision is not required here <laughs> at all. And the last layer for the back cover. And then the back cover itself, the raised part, gets glued to the back. For the flap, I used these dies, which are designed by my favorite designer, Nicole Silhouette. And I cut the flaps, two layers of flaps, and I only need to remember to glue the magnet. So I'm using the glue tape again putting the flap on the in the place and that's how I feel well the magnet needs to go. And when the magnet is glued temporarily to the flap, I can add the liquid glue and the second layer. And later I will also add the you see the little uh, little little black part as a decoration, which is cut just simply from the black cardstock. I'm putting the flap, I'm letting the magnets to hold the flap in place, and this is how I see where I need to mark and score the flap for folding. It goes back in place again. I mark the place for the second fold, score it, and fold it. And now it's just a matter of gluing it in place. So the back side will be held in place by a glue, and the front side, thanks to the magnet, I can open. And for additional decorations, I'm adding a little flap. Uh, in my head, this imitates, uh, you know, the catalogs, if you have these boxes with and samples and you want to take them out, you use a flap to take them out. And then decoration. I stamped a lot of uh, label stamps on a tea dyed paper. I have these papers prepared. Just used one television evening and prepare a lot of labels. And then they can go on many, many projects. And I'm cutting out these labels, darkening the edges a little bit and gluing them so that they remind me of uh, registration of your collection, again your specimen registration lists or something. 
<laughs> you know that I love labels. Any excuse to use a label, I will use a label. And this label is a little bit torn in the process. I'm leaving it like that. I love it. It's a nice touch, make adding to the, you know, vintagey feel. And then gluing several labels on top of each other. And of course a stamp. I love using this uh, script red stamp or blue stamps as they uh, leave an impression that somebody has uh, written something on their uh, collection piece. Just for added interest I'm trying to vary the techniques. On the front cover I was gluing the labels. On the inside I'm stamping. I stamped this uh, label stamp and I have this uh, beautiful vertical handwritten text stamp from our atelier, I think. I'm adding it in blue ink to make an impression that somebody has written something by hand. And then I filled in the label with red ink, again to imitate the handwriting. And on back side I'm gluing some of my ephemera collection pieces. This fragile, by the way, is not ephemera. It is an official label you glue on your packaging when you are sending something fragile. But it works perfectly, I think. So now the, the most exciting part, gluing our bug to the album. I'm trying to make it a little bit more dimensional. I put my uh, cutout grasshopper on a thick cloth, which I usually use to clean my table. And I found a marker which has a rounded tip and I'm pressing against the grasshopper and it becomes uh, slightly rounded and dimensional. Of course, you, if you are, for example, a flower maker, you have special tools for that and you can use those. I use the offcuts of the foam sheet to glue them to the back of my grasshopper to give him, to give him a raise and dimension. And now it's just a matter of gluing it in place. I, but you will see that we will have to come back to him later. And here it is! Here is our ephemera album for your entomology album, for example, or just for your specimen collection. Oh, and see, I didn't even notice. I got another thing, Tita didn't notice that the grasshopper glue was not dry yet and the grasshopper hopped away. <laughs> And here are the other albums I made, and I s I'm showing you this one because it's slightly different. I use decorative papers to decorate it. And especially if you have the Stamperia papers from this collection, Amazonia papers, that would be a great way to decorate these albums too. And now I noticed that my grasshopper has escaped. The glue was still a little, a little bit wet, so I was able to glue it straight back in its place. So here are our entomology albums. I love them very much, if I may say so myself. And I seriously feel that you are inspired to create something similar for your own album or collection.